Hey everyone, in this video we're going to give you some cheap and easy tips for going zero waste. We've been really inspired by the zero waste movement and even though we're not completely zero waste ourselves, we're constantly making an effort to reduce the amount of garbage that we produce. We've been doing it for years and trying a lot of different things. So we're really excited to share some of our tips with you. We've got about a dozen ideas that are cheap and easy and really effective at reducing waste so that you can get started on your low waste or zero waste lifestyle right away. For each tip, we're gonna give you the super budget option that costs almost nothing to do so that you can get started right away. And then we'll also show you some options for things that you can invest in if you decide that you want to pursue this low waste lifestyle for a longer period of time. Before we get to the zero waste tips, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Ecosia for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of them already, they're like a green Google and they plant trees in deforested areas around the world with their ad revenue. So it's a really amazing service and it's completely free. There's no signups or anything. Basically, you just search the internet using Ecosia and they take care of the rest. So chances are, if you are watching this video, you're interested in reducing your environmental footprint. Um, and so this is one rare opportunity where you can actually have an impact without doing too much. So definitely check them out. We'll put a link to Ecosia in the description of this video. It is a trackable link because we're curious to know how many of you are interested in using their search engine. So click that link to let us know you're interested. The first thing you can do to get started on your zero waste or low waste journey is to get educated and find out what options are available to you. To start, you'll want to go to the website for your city or the town where you live and usually there's a section for residents that will give you some more information about your recycling program, what goes in the garbage and whether you have a compost program. So look into it and read the list of what you can put in the recycling and what state it needs to be in. That's step number one. Just make sure that you're taking advantage of every option uh, for properly sorting your waste. The second thing to do is educate yourself on your own garbage. And so you can do what's called a waste audit at your own home. So it sounds a little messy, but you can wear gloves. Uh, so just take the time to go through your garbage and your recycling bin, and you can even sort it in different piles and just have a look at what's in your garbage and your recycling and see if there's anything that has been miscategorized. For example, when I did my waste audit, um, I noticed that a lot of paper towels were in the garbage and I could have been composting them the entire time. Another great advantage to doing a waste audit, even though I know it's a little bit weird, is that once you pile up all your garbage in different categories, it really shows you where your garbage is coming from. Once you know how to properly dispose of your garbage and you know how much garbage you're producing, this is probably a really good time to start getting inspired for reasons why you want to reduce that amount of garbage. A few things you can do would be to check out some documentaries about the effects of plastic on our environment. You can also follow some bloggers who are living the zero waste lifestyle and check out some Instagram accounts as well. And I'll put some links for suggested inspiration in the description of this video. Now let's get into some of the cheap and easy things you can do to start using less plastic. So the first one is to stop using plastic grocery bags. A budget option for using fewer plastic shopping bags would be to reuse the shopping bags that you do have until they fall apart, or you can buy some cloth bags that'll last a little longer. Another plastic bag that you can avoid is the thin plastic bags that are in the produce section at the grocery store. So you can either just stop using them all together, you can reuse the ones that you do have just by rinsing them out and reusing them, or you can invest in some reusable produce bags. Water bottles are something that a lot of people are still using even though they're very wasteful and they're actually not great for your health either because they're made with plastic that actually leaches chemicals into the water. So a better option would be to reuse a glass juice bottle for example that you can just rinse out after every use. You can use a mason jar or you could invest in a stainless steel water bottle. And if you're concerned about water quality it would be less wasteful to invest in a water filter than to keep using bottled water. Instead of using plastic sandwich bags and plastic containers for packing lunches and things like that, you can use glass and stainless steel containers. For years, we reused containers that we found in the kitchen, like old salsa jars, hummus containers, yogurt containers, and things like that. So it is possible to find cheap or free alternatives without spending a lot of money right up front. While we're talking about reusing glass jars, I have one quick tip for you that'll help you remove the labels. You can soak the jars in water, remove all the paper, and then if you put olive oil and a little bit of baking soda on the glue and just let it sit for a few minutes, you should be able to scrub all that glue off. There are certain kinds that don't come off, but generally this is a tip that works. Buying food in bulk and using your own bags and containers is a really great way to reduce the amount of packaging that you're consuming. But if you're like me, when you walk into a regular grocery store, it can feel really overwhelming. Everything's in a package and it just feels like it's gonna be impossible to ever be able to buy your groceries and the food you need without also buying a lot of packaging. 
So the trick is that you might need to start looking into alternative places to buy your food. You might want to look up if there's any bulk stores in your area, if there's any farmers markets. Um, another thing that we learned about is bulk food buying groups. There's one in the area where we were and basically you just go online, you can order all the different food that you want and you show up on pickup day and you just fill all your containers with the food that you ordered. So there's a few different options, but not all of us live or travel in areas where bulk stores and bulk buying groups are an option. So in that case, what I do is I shop around and I try to choose as many fruits and vegetables as I can that don't have packaging. And then when I go up and down the aisles in the regular grocery store, I try to prioritize buying things that are in cardboard, glass, or in cans because they're recyclable, but also I know that if given time, they'll eventually break down, whereas plastic is around for hundreds of years. For bread, you can often buy it unpackaged at a bakery, so you could bring your own cloth bag or a paper bag. Um, even at some grocery stores, if you go to the bakery section, the bread is actually just in paper bags instead of plastic. So that's a great option too. And when you get home to keep it fresh, you can either reuse a plastic bread bag or you can use a wax wrap like the one that we have here. Another disposable product that a lot of us are using every single day is coffee cups from the coffee shop. So even though it looks like they are paper cups, they're often lined with plastic, which means that they're really difficult to recycle because they're not really paper or plastic, and they're also not compostable. So it's best just to avoid them as much as possible by bringing a reusable mug. Or if you usually have your coffee at the cafe, then you can ask them if they have a regular ceramic mug that you can just use while you're there. Another thing we usually carry with us is a food container and some cutlery in case we end up wanting takeout or going to a restaurant and not finishing everything. We wanna be able to bring that food home with us in our own container. For a long time, we would just carry around a regular spoon or a fork from home, but recently we bought these foldable sporks that take up no space. I carry mine in my purse and Matt carries his in his backpack so we can avoid using plastic cutlery in a lot of situations. I know it can seem a little bit annoying, but you kind of get in the habit of doing it and then you're prepared for whatever happens. So that's it. Those are some of our most basic, easy and affordable tips that you can try in your everyday life to see if it helps you reduce the amount of garbage that you're producing. One last thing I would suggest is to become a friendly activist. So if your friends and family or if cashiers at grocery stores are asking you why you're doing what you're doing, this may be the first time they've met someone who's trying to do what you're doing and the way you act with them is how they're going to perceive the entire movement. So try to be really friendly and open and engaging. Most of the time it works out really well. Another thing I would suggest is if you go to a restaurant or you order takeout um, or you go to a store and you notice that they're using a kind of packaging that isn't sustainable or recyclable, um, I would suggest just sending them a message after and letting them know, I really liked your restaurant or your store, but I noticed you're still using styrofoam for your takeout cups or your takeout containers. And I just wanted to suggest that you look into compostable alternatives, for example. Um, they may not listen to you the first time, but if we all take the time to write these nice messages, it might eventually start to change things. I hope you found these tips helpful. I'm planning to share a video about our six month adventure trying to reduce our waste as much as possible this past winter. So stay tuned for that video. Please share this video if you liked it and you can subscribe to our channel if you wanna see more alternative living videos. We post a new one every week.